Hey guys, what's up? Going to uh, service this BG42 Sabenza. Had to do it anyways. I've been carrying it nonstop since I got the lanyard bead from my good friend in Germany. Thanks again. Really enjoying it. Um, this BG42 Sabenza is 16 years old. Uh, this was born around 96. And for many, a Chris Reeve knife buyer, this is a... Uh, I dare say Grail EDC. Um, the large regular profile uh, BG42 blade. Um, so if you're not into Chris Reeve knives, uh, basically uh, the big complaint about Chris Reeve knives is that they run their S30V and S35VN steel just a little bit soft. And I would say that's true, but uh, it does make sharpening easy. <clears throat> The nice thing about the BG42 is it was ran around 61, so this holds its edge like any other knife, you know, any other high-end knife. Uh, not that the S30 or the S35 VN is bad, but this is better, um, in my opinion, shown in real-world use. Uh, it just holds edge longer than my S30V Sebenzis. So, anyways, <clears throat> 16 years old. Very smooth, blade still centered, lock up is deep, I mean for sure, but it hasn't moved in years. And remember with Chris Reeve, uh, you get the warranty, so if anything ever fails or whatever, I'm covered. So I normally crack this back just a little bit, then pop out the pivot. Should take around 10 minutes to break the whole knife down, clean it all up. So here it is, all dirty. Hardly any oil in there at all. Let's see how much dirt and stuff we got in here. I'm just using water just for the sake of the video here. Just rinsing it off. Just to kind of get the lint out. That lock face. You can see how it's kind of dented in a little bit. I don't know if you can see that that wear. Most titanium frame locks do that. That's why Spyderco does the uh, the military stainless steel inset now, because titanium is relatively soft. You know, it's a strong material, but it's just not uh, not as hard as the blade. Especially at, what, 61 Rockwell. Backspacer. Nice, pretty blue. Pretty. And I'm going to take out this assembly here. And put it in the water. Put the water here so you can see what I'm doing. Pop out that centerpiece. And I don't recommend lubing your knives with WD-40, but um, to take the crap off the blade, like that sticky tape residue and stuff, it's fine. Fine for that. Alright. I feel like that's clean. Make sure you wipe out in here where the blade stop for when it closes. Get all that grime out. See the lock face. Hmm, not gonna focus. I don't know if you can see it right there. Alright, anyways, let's move on. The lube, I am out of Chris Reeve grease, the fluorinated grease. It's good stuff. It's uh, it's not what I prefer, though. I've had a tube of it before, and I like a thinner viscosity, so the blade kind of has a little bit more freer action. A lot of people ask me on my videos, you know, how, how does your Sebenza just flick out like that? It's your oil. Now this will not last as long as the fluorinated grease. And especially with the new Sebenzas with the holes in the washers to hold the grease down, it won't do anything for that mill tank. 
Um, but anyways, this works for me. I may have to clean my knife a little bit more than you if you're using fluorinated grease. There's a reason why Chris Reeve chose that grease. I mean, that's the grease that goes with the knife. But this works for me, and I don't see a reason to change because I'm happy. So there's the center bearing. All right, so I'm just going to slap it back together, and then we'll sharpen it and strop it up. Put that uh, stop sleeve, the pin, on there. Put the lid on it. Notice I did not put the blade in there yet. No need to put the blade in there yet. <clears throat> now because the Sebenza is so tight and fit, you can tighten this back one down all the way. You're not going to have to fiddle with it to get blade centering or anything. Now this pin, the stop pin here, tighten it down a little bit tight because you have to keep the um, the gap in here, how, they, how it's set off this stop pin sleeve. But you don't want to tighten it down all the way, if that makes sense. So right where I feel tension, just stop. We're going to build this, how I do this. I put my finger behind here. I drip a little bit in the center and around. Now I lift my finger out, kind of brush it on the back side. Then usually wipe off, because I always put way too much on there, wipe off that lock tang. So you can see, you don't need a whole lot. And your shiny side of your washer goes towards the blade. There's the shiny side. It's towards the blade. Then, even though I probably don't need it because this side touches the titanium and doesn't rotate, I just put a little drop on there. A little drop on there. And you got to make sure this is totally even. And then slide it into here. So I just slid that in. Push this lock bar face, <laughs> lock bar down. Slide this over. There's your hole. Slide your pin back through. And usually it just pops right in there. What's going on? Of course, there it goes. Try to make me look like a fool on camera. That's not hard to do though, huh? Yak, 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 yak. Alright, so. The moment of truth, which is not really a moment of truth, because with Chris Reeve, it's going to be right. All right, same thing. A little bit of tension. Stop. Then I tighten this up all the way. Then tighten that up all the way. Then this is just OCD, but I check this one just to be sure. Blade should be centered and very smooth. Now, if you see that, it looks like the lockup changed a little bit. But that's just because you hadn't set the lock in here yet. So about three good flicks will get that back to where it needs to be. I don't know if you can see how much smoother that is. You can definitely feel it. I mean, I'm barely putting any pressure out. It's kind of like a 45 degree angle. It's like right there. Alright, let's see if I can put a quick little edge on here. <clears throat> I had these out in case I needed them, and a pencil in case the lock was sticky. You can always, I wanted to show you that. The Sebenza doesn't need it, but you can always color in your lock face when you have it apart, and you can color in here if you have a sticky titanium frame lock. That graphite uh, just lubricates up that lock face and makes it easier to unlock. 
no wiggle at all. 16 years old. That's why the Sebenza is so nice. And this one happens to be BG42, which is just freaking sweet. So it still has a pretty good edge on it. And I've been carrying it a while. I'm just propping this up on my strop here. I'm gonna just gonna touch up the micro bevel, which is another benefit of a micro bevel. Let's see if I can do this on camera. This is totally not the way I naturally sharpen, reaching around a camera and whatnot, making sure it's all staying in frame. This is very light strokes and raised up a little more than I need to be because I'm on that micro bevel. You can feel a difference between the BG42 on this stone and the S30V, so there is definitely a hardness difference. This is the ultra fine stone, I'm sure you know that. The best stone you can get. I need to do a little stone review on this. If you want to start freehanding, start with this stone. It's the only stone you should buy when you first start, if you only have money for one stone. Alright, so because that was just a micro bevel, this is very sharp now. <laughs> I kind of slipped because I didn't put enough pressure on there. belly right here seems like it could use let me get that just a little bit more and you can concentrate when you're freehanding I'll do a video on that I like freehanding so much better than any clamp system and I've pretty much tried them all except for that new wicked edge and I'm just not even interested in it may give great results But I much prefer using a freehanded knife. Just they kind of micro convex because no human can hold the same exact angle. And that little bit of convex, when it comes way down to your edge, really does, I think, shine and holds that edge. I can put a freehand edge versus up a edge pro edge. And uh, usually that freehand edge will hold up in real world use a little bit longer than the edge pro edge, at least in my experiences. What I'm doing right here is just making sure there's not a burr on there. There, that's better. <clears throat> now, just going to strop it. already done a video on this uh, just for the sake of time I'm only doing the micro bevel here you can hear it to shave my arm here but let's see how how it does yep wow my skin looks weird under this light look at that watch tan heck yeah all right all right that's the video guys thanks for hanging out I appreciate you watching. See ya.